Hi everyone, it's Irene, and um, before I start showing you the project I have ahead of me, I just want to thank everyone who took the time out to send me some wonderful notes, private messages, cards, packages, well wishes and prayers. I really appreciate it. Um, I've been under the weather for a while, since April actually, and um, I'm trying to get better during all of this, taking care of my mom, and you know life. So. Um, just want to thank you to everyone who's been sticking by me and my channel and uh, watching my videos even while I'm gone. But I'm back now and I'll try to do some videos more often. Uh, trying to figure out my mom's new care now. And so um, on we go. So what I wanted to show all the junk journal junkies is I put out a, a sample of what I did here. Which is coffee dyeing. With these beautiful images on these pages. This is coffee dyed. Oh, this is a doily here. But um, oh, doily. let me see. What I wanted to show was this butterfly here. It's a coffee dyed image. It's not chalk. It doesn't rub off. It's definitely imprinted in the paper. Here's another beautiful design. And here is another faded one, but just as pretty, all depending on how your coffee dyeing takes to the paper. But aren't those pretty images? And everybody's wondering how I'm doing that. And let me just show you. And before I start showing you how to do it, I want to direct you to Colleen. Her YouTube channel is 47CMC and her video is dated on 10-7-2015 and it's using caulk, not chalk, but caulk, C-A-U-L-K, in silicone mold, and it's the updated video is what you want to watch, and that's how I, uh, that's what I used to make these imprints, was I made my own stencils out of caulk. They're really fun to use in many, many ways, multimedia, cards, you can paint them, use them as elements on your projects. I like to paint them and use them as elements on my junk journals and uh, booklets that I make. And here's that imprint right here. See that right there? All this is is a, a mold made from caulk and it's coffee dyed. And you're asking how I got this mold after I made it and, and uh, Colleen does a wonderful job of showing everyone how to do that and what products to use. But if you don't want to wait to go online to get any molds, you can get these lace molds. Uh, they're used for um, fondant and sugar art in the bakery section. And if you go to Hobby Lobby or Michaels, um, even Joann's might have them. But these are the very fine molds that you use with the uh, products that, that uh, Colleen will show you and tell you how to use. But you need to follow her directions and she goes through them quite thoroughly. She has a beautiful channel. She has a lot to share with all of us. A wonderful, wonderful crafter. And just a great way to use these molds. And not just for your baking, but once you use it for crafting, don't switch over, obviously, for baking. Um, so I have quite a few of these and they're very fun to use. And when you use your caulk, you can make a lot of these. And I just want to show you <clears throat> how I have a big box right here that I use of all the molds I have made and I just store them in this box and you can make some really pretty ones if you go online you can buy some really pretty molds out there and you just want to look for the fondant or sugar art mold but if you don't want to wait you can head on over to Hobby Lobby and in the baking section they do have those molds just look for them they're hanging right there and they look like that okay so that's how I did that now if you don't want to do what Colleen did and you want to just use some of the items you have on hand now if you can see this imprint there it's kind of faded because I was in a rush but what I did was I used my metal um, the stability and here it is right here all I did was I painted my paper and coffee and I put that in there when it dried it came out so depending on what you have on hand, and if you just want to play around and try things you have in your craft room, that's just one of the things you can do. And of course, you can do some doilies, which is these doilies right here were used to make the imprints of these doilies. 
quite a few people were talking about how their doilies don't come out no matter what. So I'm here to show you how I do it. And so maybe that will answer some questions. So here's um, also if you don't have any of those things and you have some of these punches by Martha Stewart. Here is the punch I used to make this piece of paper. See how I punched that out on a piece of cardstock. I laid it on my coffee paper and look at the imprint I got on that. So there's many ways you can do these imprints. Just get creative, hit your stash, play around, and have some fun. So let me just do a quick tutorial and see if I can do this on time before I get any interruptions. I like to use these really cheap paint brushes because once it um, soaks up the coffee, it doesn't drip. In my coffee, I have this big bottle that I have of ready-made coffee. It's super, super dark. I go to Dollar Tree and get instant coffee, and I use a whole container and a very, about, you know, like four cups of water. This used to be full, and make a very concentrated um, version of this coffee, and I just keep it in this spray bottle. And what I do is I put it in this container that I got from Dollar Tree. It's usually, you know, the one, it's like a sugar container, but I like to use it in this. That way, if my mom comes around, there's no more spilling. You won't believe how many things I have coffee dyed that I did not want coffee dyed. <laughs> anyway, so I use this container. I pour some coffee in here, very little, and the rest of it, I use this right here from Dollar Tree. This is an old trick to an old version of how to do coffee dyeing or tea dyeing. And if you want to put some sparkle, you can use some um, uh, eyelash, no, not eyelash, I'm sorry, I don't even use this stuff. It's uh, eyeshadow from Dollar Tree, any version. I've had this for several years now, and I still have a lot to go. And I used a spoon to just stir it up. It's all nice and shiny there. And uh, I did a little punch here of this cutout right here. And what I'll show you is I'll take my 28 pound paper, I take my paintbrush, I just quickly paint. See how it's not pouring everywhere? Huh. Hopefully you get, can see that. See how on the brush it just stays right in the bristle. I get it nice and soaked. I have a stack of papers here that I'm doing on. It's a big stack, see? And I don't mind because it, it, anything that goes through, it's gonna get coffee dyed anyway and you're not wasting your solution. So I get the coffee paper all nice and soaked up. I take my die cut, I lay it on the coffee paper right on the edge, take my paintbrush and go over that punch out and soak it all up, get it at heat, you know, adhere it to, you know, uh, that coffee dyed paper. And wet on wet sticks to wet, right? So then it's nice and soaked there. Let me see if I can lift it without uh, moving it around too much. See, it's pretty much on there. All right, and I go over it with my fingers, make sure everything's adhered exactly how I want it. Then what I do quickly, because I usually do this when my mom's right next to me and I can't get to the oven, is I take my heat gun, so excuse the noise, but I just hit it with my heat gun really quickly in those areas as I'm pushing it down with my finger because you know as it dries, it starts to curl up a little, which is fine. And I'll just show you with that alcohol, this dries up really quick. Now this works just the same in the oven I just can't take the camera down there and all of that. It's just easier for me to do it right here. And let me just, show, oh, so you don't want to touch it too much because it lifts up, but it does work. And I'll show you here real quickly. This has been a really fun process for me to use in my junk journals and card making. Really fun uh, way, you know, if you're getting tired of coffee dyeing doilies all the time. This is just an alternative way of using your stash in a different way. So then I just dried it. See, it didn't take too long. Let me lift it up. I mean, let me just show you the design that I received from that punch. Isn't that beautiful? Now, if you don't want this kind of a lip here, all you have to do is cut as close as you can to that die cut, and you won't get that gap there. But I don't mind because it's going to go into a junk journal. But isn't that pretty? I think it is. So this is just to show you and everyone out there, if you want to know how to make the caulk um, silicone mold, check out Colleen at 47CMC. 
this is the video you want to watch because there's an important update of what product to use and what product not to use so you don't mess up your molds. She does a beautiful job explaining and uh, have fun with all your coffee dyeing, uh, doilies and molds and all kinds of beautiful paper. Coffee isn't just for drinking anymore. It goes for crafting too and it's just beautiful. And like I said, once again, thank you to all who've taken the time out to write me a card, a message. Uh, I've been reading my private messages now that I got to my computer. I want to thank each and every one of you who've taken time out from their busy day to think of me. I really do appreciate it. All right, everyone. I hope everyone's having a great day. Take good care. I'll be back with more videos. Bye-bye.